Now we're inside of three years in business, you know, and I was looking at my shop and we were rolling. We had crazy contracts. Monday through Thursday, we're working eight hour shifts and then we're stacking it. So we're, then we're actually running 16 hour shifts. And then we would load fixtures and tombstones at the end to get them to run until the guys came the next morning. So we're almost running 24 hours a day, Monday through Thursday in that shop. And then on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I had another team come in and they were working 12, 12, 12. So you work 36 hours and you get four days off and I pay you for 40 hours. So that was like a cool thing. A lot of people, they, they love that, especially like, you know, maybe older guys, their, their wife's home, they, they don't have kids or, or something's going on, right? Like the kids are in college already. Like they could have four days off. They just work Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, boom. Okay, so then we were working 116 hours per week, and then the machine would run beyond that. So when I was looking at all of these contracts, and I was looking at the 12 CNCs that I already had on the floor, and we were running a crazy amount of titanium and 17.4, and running now running ink canal, um, aluminum, plastic, UHMW, all of it. We were running all of it. It just was a time with contracts in hand to step up. So at that time, we put down, like I put down $500,000 for a 550SX horizontal from Toyota. Beast machine. This spindle was the biggest spindle I'd ever seen. Just crazy low end power. You guys hear me, I'm like, oh, I get that low. When you get a machine like that and it just drops titanium chips day and night for month after month after month that's what you do people say like well you know that's a super expensive machine and and this and this well hey you got to look at the math i already told you i was running 116 hours per week our shop was rolling and i had gone to my customer and i said you know what i can't afford all of this titanium is so expensive you purchase it for me and therefore, you're saving because I, if I purchased it, I would raise it 15%, 18%, 20%, because that's what we do as manufacturers. We purchase and then we raise and then we put that cost back to the customer. But I said, I'm not gonna do that. You purchase it since you're a beast company. And then on a machine like this, they'd be charging you like 200, 250 an hour. I will charge you $125 an hour. And you already know that my programs are like times faster than the other shops that are doing work for you when you actually look at it and i looked at the math they got it and i got it 116 hours times 125 dollars an hour times four and that's per week and then you go times 52 weeks in a year that comes out to 754 thousand dollars that's just, I don't have to pay anything else. Like I don't have to pay for the material or anything. $750,000. Um, and if you divide that by 12 months, each month would be about 62,833. I just did the math, 62 grand. And the machine was set up to pretty much run on its own. We invested time into this machine, into the programs, but it pretty much ran on its own. You go up and you load and you're, they're tombstones, right? So you're outside loading, it's running. And then it basically sits and then grabs that tombstone, boom. And once in a while you walk back and you load the next one, you inspect it. The inspector comes out, does in process, boom, 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 and just makes it happen. I would look at it and I'd say, you know what? If I actually look at my very high paid guys and a couple other guys, and I put three guys for three shifts, I mean, in, that's inside of $20,000 that I'm spending per month on these guys. But guess what? Because of the, the machine, and its ability to run on its own, these guys, they're only working part of the time so they can go and run these other machines at the exact same time. So they were running the, when they were on that shift, whatever shift it was, they were running the Toyota, but they would have a couple other machines right next and they would run those parts also. And if they sat for a little bit, it just wouldn't even matter. And that's how I made sense of the whole thing. And we rolled for a long time making those parts and everything was good. 
and then the 08 crash happened you guys know the story and it's crazy right i don't look back and say oh i wish i didn't do it i had the opportunity i had the contracts i went after it i got the machine the machine was great pounded out a ton of work and when the economy hit that was like actually one of when that work went away there was uh guns were like big right there so in nevada there was a company uh, doing fire, firearms and I just, um, they were looking for a machine. All the machines had lead times and they purchased my machine. Boom, solved that problem. It was gone and that's it. Now, one thing I'll say is you got to like understand, I was inside of three years, but at the same time, I got crazy contracts. I had crazy opportunities. That does not happen. My story is just like a crazy story. If you're gonna step up and spend that money, you gotta make sure that you have contracts in place. You gotta make sure that you have the work. You gotta look at the type of work. You gotta make sure that that industry makes sense. This is, this is an industry that is growing. You gotta make sure that your, your, your roots, you guys hear me talk about it. Like I always make these deals. Some of my, you know, a lot of people like the machining but you got to listen to some of these stories because because I'm, I'm giving you guys the mental game. I'm talking about the deals and how I dig my roots like a tree, man. Like I dig my roots into the company and the customer so that they cannot get rid of me. You create such partnerships and you become so close and they become dependent on you that you have that security. And with that security and those blanket orders and the contracts, then you can step out and go after these machines and the bigger machines and stuff. And if you have your own company and you're paying for manufacturing and you want to bring that manufacturing in-house and, and you have longevity and you have consistency, that is when you actually bring these machines in. And that is when you actually, exactly like I said, you fixture these things up for greatness. So that machine runs nonstop. You run off the, all of the tooling and in the magazine, you run off of a tool list so you don't change them in and out and do all these setups, but you basically automatically load your programs, automatically load your offsets, your tools are in there, everything goes from part to part to part, and these machines can make you a ton, a ton of money. But remember, life is levels, that's it, that's my story. What happened when I actually got my first major beast machine? Oh.